Welcome everyone to the uh, fifth quarter sportscast, the inaugural episode. Uh, I am Jared Judy, and I'm here with my buddy Todd Corley. And uh, we're, full disclosure, we're not experts, we're not sharks, we got nothing but fandom here. Uh, so take it at heart. Um, just do a little foot, football breakdown, maybe get into some uh, divisional stuff this week and uh, see how that goes and then maybe break down some some fantasy stuff see what that looks like and uh, I don't know maybe we'll get into some parlay stuff and see what that see what we can dig through on that I don't know we'll see where it takes us um, how you doing buddy oh sleepy <laughs> ill prepared but very confident yeah. Hey, it's consistency, buddy. Consistency is the key, right? That's right. <laughs> All right. So obviously we're uh, uh, we just finished up week two of the NFL, and I don't know your thoughts, but it, it's kind of been all over, in my opinion. You got some some major major blowouts, and then you got a lot of games finishing in overtime, like. I don't know. I don't think I remember seeing that many overtime games and a tie for one <laughs> to start out the uh, NFL season this early. Like, it, I don't know. It seems like they're kind of all over the spectrum, but you've got your heavy hitters like obviously Buffalo and um, obviously Baltimore's on fire. Well, they were. Um, and then you got the bottom feeders like, you know, the Colts, <laughs> 24 nothing to Jacksonville yet again. Um but we'll leave the, uh, the AFC North and NFC North, obviously, since that's our bread and butter. That's our main focus weekly. We'll leave those for last. But looking at the uh, AFC East, obviously, you got the Dolphins at 2-0, and the Bills at 2-0, and Jets at 1-1, one and, one, and the Patriots at 1-1. One and one. Um, I think it's fair to say, obviously, it's kind of across the board. Obviously, the Bills are by prohibited favorite, obviously. They, and they just laid a beat down on the... Uh, and the Titans, that I, I don't know. I don't know what to think of the Titans anymore. I mean, I used to think, to, you know, with Henry there, they had a pretty good shot at just running over everybody, but he really wasn't a factor. <laughs> no, I saw him get laid out week one. I'm... Even even that Buffalo defense, I mean, they're not a joke, but they were basically running all over that offensive line of Tennessee. I mean, he was basically a non-factor. Um but as far as the Dolphins, I don't know. What do you think of that new guy, McDonald? I think that's his name, the coach down in Miami. Oh, um, uh, yeah. He he kind of looks like the nerdiest coach of the thirty-two, but I, I don't know. He seems to he seems to be able to get something working down there because I mean the last guy was getting paid to lose games. <laughs> so, yeah, My, Mike McDaniel. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I think Miami's going to be Miami. I, yeah, they're going to have a couple weeks where their wide receivers put up 400 yards total I, I, between yeah. two of them. For the most part, I think Tiger gonna, can't change his stripes. No, I think they're going to level out at some point. I think they're just getting kind of hot, or you know, they're kind of what's that? The uh, high tides raise all boats. <laughs> I think right now they're just benefiting from the fact that we don't really know what any of these teams are right now. Um, I think it's safe to say with the Patriots, uh, that, that goes to save for them as well. I, mean, I have no clue what to think of the Patriots. I mean, they're getting knocked around. Nobody knows what's going on with offense. and you know. But then again, they they gave the Steelers a run for their money this past week. So I don't really know. What Steelers are trash. Patriots are trash. Well, and I think with, with the Steelers you know, going that route, if T.J. Watt's out, that defense is a whole different, a whole different personality, and the fact that they have really no competent, you know, quarterbacks right now, and everyone's already screaming for Kenny Pickett at week two. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of concerns to go around in Pittsburgh, but we'll uh, we'll visit them here in a little bit. But um, moving to the AFC West, obviously you got. I mean, these guys are going to just beat up on each other all year. You got the Chiefs, the Chargers, Broncos, and the Raiders. I mean, obviously the Chiefs are the Chiefs. They're two and zero. You got the Chargers and the Broncos at one and one, and the Raiders at zero and two. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of shocked at the Raiders at zero and two. I kind of expected with all those 
offensive weapons they had, I kind of figured that they were going to kind of be tied with the Chiefs. I thought they were going to be two and two or two and zero. Um, but granted, they they should have had that Cardinals game one. They let that one slip away. But the Chiefs are the Chiefs. I mean, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> with that offensive power, you know you, you're in store for a game. But, I mean, again, with the Chargers, I don't know what to expect with them. I mean, they're The high. offense runs through Justin Herbert. Exactly. With, him, with his ribs, with him they're, being banged up, they're, they're going to be hurting. Exactly. They're, they're hot, then they're not, then they're hot, then they're not. And uh, I don't know what to think of Austin Eckler this year. Like, my, uh, my favorite thing I saw on Twitter was Austin Eckler picture of him next to a package of dental floss saying that this is the second week this season that the dental floss has more yards than Austin Eckler. I I mean, they haven't really had any major coaching changes, right? As far as coordinators or anything that I remember. And it just seems like they forgot how to utilize him. Like he was a monster last year and he was their bell cow. You know, everything ran behind him. And then this year, so far, through week two, he's kind of been a non-factor for the most part. Now, granted, they had Keenan Allen out this past week, too, so that didn't help. But still, it looks like if, I mean, that goes with any team, if Herbert's beat up and he's hurt, then I, I don't know. I don't think they have much of a shot. Um, as far as the Broncos, let's be honest, Russ ain't cooking anymore. <laughs> Kitchen's <laughs> closed. Yeah, that I I don't know. Now, granted, I um, I I don't know. I liked uh, you know, uh, when the head coach was with Green Bay, I felt like it was a good gel. But I feel like obviously that disaster of a game week one just got it got away from him. It was too big for him. He he almost kind of had the uh, what is it the Mike McCarthyism, where he had a hard time trying to manage time. I, mean, I don't exactly know what that was down the stretch there, week one, with all the timeouts. And I did think it was kind of funny on the uh, Pat McAfee show. They were saying that the fans in the stands this past game were <laughs> counting down the dang, the time clock to remind them, hey, <laughs> you're running out of time. Time to snap the ball. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Does that fall on him? I think that more falls on Russ. Or maybe a combination of both and then, you know, Nobody's just being on the same page as far as communication. No one knows where to line up. No one knows the jobs. I think it's kind of a combination of everything, really. Yeah, if you've got a veteran quarterback like that. That stuff shouldn't happen. He should cover up a lot of bumps and, and warts that the rest of the team. Well, and he's played in the NFL for how many years? Like, you should be able to go to a trash team and still be able to know the time that you know the the play clock's running out i mean that's just that's day one stuff like come on um but obviously with the afc west i think that's i think it's a given it's probably going to be the chiefs now depending on the health i think the chargers could make a run at it i mean i don't know raiders at zero and two that's a stretch um obviously for my guy Devonte adams i hope i hope he has a good season i don't know how that's going to work with all the weapons they have there. I don't think he's going to have near as much of a focused volume like he did in Green Bay. But I, I, I think it's safe to say the Broncos are the biggest bottom feeder of that division. Um, going to the AFC South, um, yuck. <laughs> we just put it there. It's disgusting. I, ugh. Jags uh, with one win. Texans uh, and Colts with half a win. So, Each. yeah, you got Jags leading that division, and they got the first pick in the draft this year, and they're <laughs> they're leading the division. Like, that's, ugh. <laughs> I don't know that I could say it any more clear. They um, unloaded the anchor that was Urban Meyer. They're going yeah, to the wow. playoffs, baby. Yeah, yeah, that's. The road to the AFC championship drives right through Jacksonville. Yeah, I, I mean, hey, I. Who knows? Maybe they win that division and they'll get those swimming pools full capacity this year. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the fact that they're leading the division is just disgusting. It's ugh. Um, I mean, the Texans and the Colts, I mean, the Texans got their own problems. They, <laughs> they're still reeling from the garbage dumpster that was on fire the last couple of years. I mean, 
all the way back from Bill O'Brien. I mean, they're still reeling from that. That it's been a disaster for quite some time, and obviously the Deshaun Watson stuff didn't help. But yeah, you have... think they'd be able to focus more on football than setting up their quarterback with massages? Well, I mean, that's. I mean, I guess if you pay that in full at the beginning of the year, you don't got to worry about it the rest of the year. <laughs> but uh, they're sitting with the Colts at zero and one and one. Um, yeah, don't try to shortchange them. They earned that half win. I mean, <laughs> they earned every bit of it. That, that is for sure. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't even know what to think of them. I mean, their rosters is ju their rosters just to say it's subpar would be an overstatement. Like that would be giving it too much courage. I just, I don't know. I don't even understand where to go with that. That's, yeah. Let's just move on. <laughs> Um, the Titans, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's just the guys are getting older or just a lack of, you know, new talent. I Obviously, I drafted, you know, Burks in our fantasy league, and I think he'll have, you know, his moments. But that offensive line against Buffalo, now granted Buffalo's got a good defense, but they couldn't stop anybody. <laughs> I mean, it was like trying to stop freight trains. They were just getting ran over. Tannehill didn't have time. Derrick Henry was getting beat up in the backfield. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was the first time he actually looked mortal. Yeah, I mean, mm. is it is it safe to say that maybe he's not the top, the top running back anymore? Volume, like, I'm not, I'm too, yeah, too much volume. It, it wears on you. Well, and I've kind of thought myself over the past couple years. I don't know if it's just the the you, you get the bag syndrome, or if it's just the wear and tear. But I kind of feel the same way with. Um, Zeke in Dallas. I mean, they've ran him into the ground so much, and I think since his rookie year, his production for the most parts, I feel like kind of on the de decline every year. Now, granted, he's been beat up and injured and stuff like that too, but I don't feel like he's been as prevalent either. But yeah, I I mean, my opinion, if Derrick Henry's um not the guy he was at one point i don't think the titans they're they're not even going to sniff a wild card yeah I indiana mean, jones said it best it ain't the <laughs> years honey it's the miles <laughs> i mean let's be honest if you take him off the field what other proven talent do you have Tannehill, i'll i'll give him a pass just because he's a veteran he's got the experience but other than that there's not a lot of true proven talent on that roster that you can rely on game in and game out as a workhorse. I mean, look what happened last year. Derrick Henry led the league in rushing yards how many weeks after he was hurt? <laughs> he wasn't even on the field, and he was still leading the league for at least a good another, what, four, five, six weeks until Taylor passed him. You take mm -hmm. that off the field, that's a that's a big hole to fill. Um, that's right. All right, so let's switch and let's go to the NFC East. Um, Eagles, Giants both sit at two and zero. Commanders at one and one. Cowboys at one and one. I don't know what's the bigger shock here: the fact that the Giants are two and zero somehow, or the fact that the Commanders are one and one and not zero and two. Um. I don't know. The, res the resurgence. The comeback player of the year, Saquon Barkley. He's I, back, baby. It it does look like just when the from the first two weeks at least. Now granted, I don't want to say it's an overreaction or, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but this is probably the best he's looked and the most consistent he's looked since his rookie year. And granted he had, you know, a year, year and a half where basically he was non existent, obviously, you know, due to injury, due to just the Giants being the Giants and being the dumpster they have been. But, again, same thing with um, Tennessee. If Saquon doesn't produce and he's not your workhorse, I don't know who else they have. I mean, let's be honest. Kadarius Toney, yeah. <laughs> when he's healthy, he might be mediocre. Um, Kenny Galladay is basically on the first ticket out of the city. Like, they don't want him there. They, they don't use him at all. Sterling Shepard's basically their best option, and that's saying something. <laughs> um, 
Daniel Jones, I mean, how many more eggs are you going to put in that basket before you realize that basket's got a hole in it? I mean, <laughs> it's just not working. Um, I think they're not going to end up the leader of that division. I don't know if they get a wild card. I think it all falls on the legs of Saquon Barkley if he can stay healthy and the line can give him holes, you know, to open. But I don't think they're I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. And if they don't, what happens to that? Do they blow it all up again and Saquon's got yet another quarterback? <laughs> got yet another offensive, you know, regime around him? I don't he's not getting any younger. I mean, I don't know. I have to say, I think the Eagles probably going to run away with that division. I mean, I they should because I'll, I'll tell you what, Jalen Hurts looks like homeboy's been. Did you watch that spending game? Spending his his uh, off season in the weight room. Yeah, did you watch that game? I well, did. I did I, see some of it in I, and out. Yeah, I watched parts of it here and there, and I was flipping back and forth because let's be honest, the Bills game was over by like I don't know eight minutes into the game. <laughs> So, and that might be an overstatement, but I was flipping back and forth. And I mean, yeah, they look good. AJ Brown looks good. Miles Sanders, he's seeming like he's kind of turned back the clock. Um, Slay picking off two balls. Uh, I, Jalen Hurts, I mean, he's just a monster in the air and on the ground. I mean, he's a dual threat. I'd If they don't run away with that division, then it's... It's their own fault. Because let's be honest, the Giants I don't think is going to be a competition for them. The Commanders with two broken ankle wins isn't going to get it done. Well, um, according to the Commanders website, old Mr. Sam Howell is leading the offense in just about every category. Which is uh, interesting I, in itself. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand because who the hell is Sam Howell? Yeah, exactly. That's my point. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, Dallas, I mean, let's be honest. They can go undefeated, and they're going to be Dallas. They're going to do Dallas things. They'll find a way to shoot themselves in the foot and screw it up somehow. They're, they're, if there's a will, there's a way. Um, and I don't think it's going to matter because, let's be honest, they look like complete trash even when Dak was playing week one. Like, they didn't look any good. They looked horrible against the Buccaneers even when he was playing. And to be honest, they actually looked remotely um, respectable with Cooper Rush. So I don't know what they're saying about that multi-million dollar quarterback that they paid money for. I mean, if he's obviously you, he's he's your guy. Obviously, that's the best talent they have. But I have faith Dallas isn't going to get it done like they never do. You know, they're America's overhyped team. <laughs> um, Just like Notre Dame. Yes. Um, I had to throw that one at you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, NFC West, I mean, there's plenty of problems to go around here, but it's even across the board. Niners, Rams, Cardinals, Seahawks, all one and one. Um, 49ers, I, I, I think mean. it's an improvement with Garoppolo. Trey Lance yeah, being out. I think, I mean, he may have some some opportunities at some point as far as getting back into that role of a quarterback. I just don't know when and I don't know where. I think obviously Shanahan really likes him, but I'm going to write off week one as a complete disaster just because of the weather. Like Justin Fields looked like trash week one. The Bears looked like trash week one. San Francisco looked like trash. Like it was just a the soldier field was a mess. So you write that off. You really can't say anything about week two because he didn't play that much before he got hurt. So I don't know that we really see what he even has to offer yet. We see glimmers and sparks, but he hasn't had he hasn't had a full opportunity yet. I feel like to even be able to give him a, an accurate grade. Um, I will say I think it kind of smooths things over in the locker room because I have to assume if you're the guy, Jimmy G, that's taken him to the playoffs how many times? You've gotten them there, and then all of a sudden they talk about letting you go. Lance is our guy, and then you bring him back as a backup with the contract they gave him. And you're a veteran. Let's be honest, veteran guys that are there, they're not gonna. Oh yeah, you know, Lance has talent. Yeah, he's no, but my days are numbered. This is a there's a finite time 
line where you can win games and you know get that ring if you're a veteran in that building do you want to wait around for lance to develop or do you want the proven commodity garoppolo which has taken you and proven he can take you there now they don't have to worry about it so i feel like that that's going to make it easy on the locker room at least because they don't have to worry about that um i don't know looking at the rams i <laughs> i don't even know what to think of them um they got blasted week one they didn't look anything near what they were in the super bowl i don't know if it's a super bowl slump if it's just if it's an issue with their offensive line i don't know but it seemed like stafford was taking a lot of hits i don't know if i mean i don't feel like they've lost a lot of people i feel like they brought most of them back um but i don't think they're gonna finish as the top they're not gonna win their division i think no. the niners i think the niners are gonna win the division I think I'll, I'll even say about the Niners, I, I almost feel like the Niners are going to be playing for an NFC championship. That's my prediction right now. 49ers. I, I think NFC that, championship. They might not win it, but they're gonna be they're gonna be in it. Mark it yeah, down. Yeah. This is I, happening. Get ready, I, Debo Samuel. I can You're in see trouble. It. I can see it. They're gonna run right on the back of Debo Samuel. And if uh, is Mitchell out for the year, or is he just week to week? Not officially, but he will be. That's what I thought. I thought he was. He'll play in three games. Yeah, I thought that he was kind of week to week, but he can't stay healthy. But 49ers with, backfield's a disaster. If they get Debo there and then they get Kittle back and they get full strength, I, it, that's a lot of speed. And with the way Shanahan draws up the offense, I could see the Niners getting that division locked up and I could see the Rams potentially playing for a wild card along with the Cardinals. I think it's going to be a two-ray race for second and third place. And let's be honest, the Seahawks are garbage. <laughs> they're garbage all the way around no, um, you don't want to pin all your hopes to Geno Smith they have zero shot they just look DK Metcalf is dead I mean, he, he's useless yeah, I mean, they've got nothing well, they've got no running game and aside from him I mean they had Rashad Penny week one but that was just all the motivation behind Russ he's not been able to stay healthy for four years either but uh, I mean Lockett's hit or miss touchdown or bust that's essentially what he's been for years and he had more upside when russ was there because russ went to him a lot but let's be honest gino is not the same quarterback as russ he's a run first type of guy compared to russ so that's going to really eat it um lock it in dk metcalf's usage and their defense isn't anywhere near what it used to be and i don't think they're going to be able to hang with the niners in that division or the rams um Moving to the NFC South, is it finally time that Tom Brady looks mortal? <laughs> um, he does not look like the same same guy. Now, granted, he's not surrounded by a lot of the same talent. They've had some changeover, but I think he finally looks like Father Time caught up. Yeah, it resembles the Crypt Keeper the way he looks right now. <laughs> That's the TB12 method. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, he's still going to be playing the 49ers in the nfc championship but uh, he does he does look uh, a little used and abused yeah the, yeah the devil the devil has a soul but um, who else in the nfc south is going to take it from him well i mean the saints probably have the arguably best defense and they did play pretty good against them um but James ultimately i mean no, I don't think the offense is going to get it done. And if the Saints do clinch that division, I think it's going to be on the, the backs of their defense. Um, I mean, Panthers, come on. Let's be honest. You got the Bucks at 2-0, and Saints at 1-1, Panthers at 0-2, and Falcons at 0-2. Right. Baker ain't getting it done. Sorry, it's not your answer. Um, Matt Roll's not your answer. <laughs> he's proven he ain't getting it done he couldn't get it done with cam newton he isn't getting it done with baker um mariota i actually I, like marcus mariota i like him but i, I think, don't feel like he's surrounded by enough talent to be able to support him in that role That's, i'll bet you this the division ends up buccaneers <laughs> falcons saints panthers well, at least we with the Falcons it. making a strong push. 
at, at least we can agree that the Panthers are last. <laughs> yeah, it, there's no way. I I think like McCaffrey said, won't last a season. Baker Mayfield's a ball boy. Well, they don't know what to do with receiver. I mean, that's a toss up every week. Um, whether he can even get the ball to him, I I don't know. But I mean, get it over the offensive line. Well, that's true. Or the too. defensive line. <laughs> or anywhere. <laughs> or the ice cream cart. That guy sucks. Yeah. Baker's. Oh. Seems like seems like you have some internal feelings on that. <laughs> I'll never forgive the guy for grabbing his crotch after he <laughs> spiked the damn flag at the center field in the block O. Yeah. Like when he was a Sooner. I'm yeah. glad he put on the little Brett Favre well, jean shorts to do the little. I think we can be honest. <sighs> let's, just, let's just put it out there. I think that's more than likely that very well could be the height of his, the pinnacle of his success. Right there. He's great in commercials. He's, he's fantastic in that Heisman commercial. Yeah. He's, he was the best part of his career in Cleveland, aside from his however so, the hell he set the rookie record. So his progressive of that, commercials were good. Since he left, did they have to change the code? Because <laughs> it <Yeah>. was six. <laughs> six. They probably left it the same. He ain't coming back. Yeah. He ain't coming home. So I think it's safe to say, yeah, Buccaneers are probably going to finish on that. Um Panthers are last, and then I think it's a two-way race on who's going to finish second and third in that. Oh, I like the Falcons. I'm telling you, they're my sleeper team. Oh, I think the Fal- I think Kyle Pitts is going to wake up. Mario is going to get his stuff together. Cordero Patterson. That's, there's Drake London. Yeah. Drake he's got, he's London. Coming on. He's coming on. Dr- you watch. Drake London, offensive rookie of the year. I can see it. It'll just come up. The, the, he'll be offensive rookie of the year the week I go against him. <laughs> I also own him in every fantasy league that I'm in. So, <laughs> yeah, whatever week we play, he's going to blow up. I'm sure. Um, so let's get to our bread and butter, the NFC North. Since we're in the NFC, Vikings, Packers, Lions, Bears, all at one and one. Um, I think it's safe to say the Bears are going to finish dead last, weighing that cart down as usual. I mean, they they got nothing. They have no talent. Mount Gun- Montgomery, eh, he's okay. He's nothing flashy. Justin Fields has arguably the most talent on that entire roster, but he has no weapons, nobody to throw to. He has no protection. <laughs> I, it's just a wasted talent for him at that point. He's got nothing around him. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I like Fields. I, I'm, I hope he has a good career, just not with Chicago. I mean, let's just be honest. Just call it what it is. Um, the Lions, I don't know. Uh, they, they're they very competitive in a lot of their games. I'm still conditioned to think just like Dallas, Detroit is Detroit. They'll find a way to tank. I mean, it, it is what it is. Vikings and Packers, man, I don't know. I Obviously, being a Packers fan, it's hard for me to say, oh, yeah, they won't win the division. But the Vikings, I mean... Justin Jefferson, uh, do I need to say anything else? <laughs> the Vikings' talent level is, is absolutely insane. The Vikings should be able to... Uh, when Dalvin Cook is your weakest link on your offense, because he can't surely... Mm-hmm. Just because on the sheer fact that he can't stay healthy, that's a very big positive. <laughs> when that's your weakest link. Um, I guess you could also say Kirk Cousins, he's hit or miss from week to week. He looked like trash this past week, completely under duress, throwing some awful passes. But then week one, Green Bay made him look like a Hall of Famer. So, I don't know. Um, as far as Green Bay goes, I don't even know what team, what, what to expect week to week. I mean, they could be a very consistent team and just basically win games on the legs of Aaron Jones and Dylan. But then again, if those are your only guys and they get shut down, what's your other options? Because you got a lot of rookies and a lot of unproven talent. And then on the opposite side, you got a lot of proven talent with older vets like Cobb and Watkins and Watkins who can't stay healthy and Cobb who can't stay healthy. I don't know what to expect. (laughs) I'm just hoping... The Vikings lose enough games that we're ahead <laughs> when all that stuff happens. But I think it's going to be a dog race in that division for those two teams. I think Detroit finishes third. I think Chicago finishes fourth. 
Um, go to your bread and butter real quick here, and then we'll wrap it up. AFC North, we got Steelers, Ravens, Browns, both are all three at one and one. And the Bengals at 0 oh and 2. I'm yeah, Steelers should should be 0 oh and 2. Steelers I'm, did not deserve a win week one. I'm really shocked to see the Bengals at 0 oh and 2, considering they've had two games now, both in ties, or uh, both in overtime, right? Both of their games went into overtime. Sounds right. I, I don't think I've seen I recall, two. I know the one did. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't remember the last time I've seen a team go to two overtime games back to back weeks. But let's be honest. I don't think Joe Burrow is going to make it through the season with that offensive line. They put a lot of resources into it, and he's still getting beat up. I think he got sick, sacked like seven times last week against Dallas. I mean, don't get me wrong. Dallas is a great defense. Micah Parsons is ridiculous, but. Can somebody block somebody? <laughs> I mean, my God, I think the water boy hit him. <laughs> I mean, if, if your franchise quarterback is on the ground seven times, not in, in addition to all the hurry-ups, how are you expecting to win games? Like, now, granted, they defied the odds last year, and they, they did it, but, man, I I don't know. Steelers are in a wheel to hurt with T.J. Watt and that who knows what's going on with their offense. Kenny Pickett is in the wings waiting. Let's be honest, as a Packers fan, I've seen the Mitch Trubisky train. I've seen that experience and how that works out. I don't think he's going to last. I think Kenny Pickett's going to get thrown in there sooner, even though Tomlin says that's not the case. Um, I, I don't know. I think the Steelers are going to squeak by somehow and squeak in, even if it's a wild card. Because I think the Ravens are going to take off with that division with the way Lamar's playing. And he's he's unreal. He's playing for that contract or he's playing for his next team. I mean, it's that simple, I think. The Browns, how in God's name do you not have the common sense to just fall down and run the clock out? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's... I would never fall the team for scoring. Or Nick Chubb for he's taken a lot of flack, and, and people have blamed him on the loss. Correct, but we've you're seen up it by you're up by thirteen points. Exactly, you're not expecting it to turn around like that. And your defense is facing Joe Flacco. Joe who, Flacco. Who, let's be honest, Joe Flacco. They have seen him in the past, so they're familiar with him. So it's not like it's an unproven guy. They've seen how he plays, but the guy hasn't played them in how many years? <laughs> and then he got, I, I don't know, I, I read a lot of articles about how the, everybody thinks the Browns locker room, the toxicity is still there. Nothing's changed. Well, They're the same old Browns. You get people pointing fingers at other players. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm not going to play the game. Blame you. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. Yeah. Well, somebody did it. You're professionals, for God's well, sake. Well, and let's be honest. I mean, yeah. Well, what did you? What did they think? The, this is what I don't understand. I was at that game. I don't understand what they thought the Jets were going to do. Did they think they were going to run it the last minute of the game? When you're, or down, did they, by how, when you're down by how many points, it's pretty obvious. When you have limited time and you're down by that many points, running isn't going to get it done. It's I just not. don't understand what the defense was doing. How you let a receiver get <laughs> past you. There's no help over the top. And, and, oh, my God, dear God, the onside kick. <laughs> did, did, did I hit a trigger? <laughs> no, let's, I mean, let's be honest. Anybody in their right mind, if you're running, you know, untouched with the way that Nick Chubb does, it's very hard not to fall into the end zone. But you also have to have some awareness of the situation. And what's going on? I mean, that's not any different than guys running out of bounds. Like, stay in bounds. The whole point is to run that clock. Fantasy owners know that from how many times in the past with the MJD when he just fell to a knee down right before, you know, short of the end zone. I get it. You're not worried about fantasy, but you have to have you also have to have the awareness of, hey, they can't stop the clock. If I fall here, game's over. I mean, it's it's that simple. Now, granted, I'm not putting it all on Chubb, obviously, because the defense took a big L on that one, too. Same thing with special teams. But it was a collaborative effort across the board. I mean, there's a lot of finger pointing to be had. I mean, when you have the game sealed away like that, and then you let it 
slip away. Unfortunately, um, you know it well or you know better than anybody else. That's that's the typical Browns move when you had it locked up and then it, somehow it, it slipped away. <laughs> there, there were only two outcomes that were going to happen <laughs> on the Browns Jets this past Sunday. One being that Chubb scores a touchdown, crowds into it, everybody loves it. People are, oh, Browns, you know, 2-0 for the first time since Nixon was in office. It's going to be great. Or, and the, and the Jets come back and win like they did. Or, the other outcome was going to be Chubb falls down inside the five. They take a knee, take another knee, fumble the handoff. Jets recover. They go 98-9 yards, whatever. The drive 2.0, Cleveland loses. The Browns were going to lose that game no matter what. It just depends on how it happened. And it happened the way it did. It was an epic meltdown. It was tragic. They'll be making Hollywood movies about it 20 years from now. It'll be great. Joe Flacco, the hero. <laughs> Awful. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. All right. So we kind of touched on a little bit of the uh, divisional breakdowns. Um, I think it's still obviously too early to tell as far as where everybody's going to finish because obviously, you know, it's, it's only week two and you got a lot of the overreactions. You got teams coming out of the gates and, you know, they're either really, really bad and, you know, they're onto the next year's draft or they're already Super Bowl contenders. Obviously, you know, like I said, it's week two, but everybody overreacts. Um but we'll just have to see how this pans out and see what week uh, week three has in store, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, you got anything else? No, I, I just predict a lot of Baker Mayfield batted balls, Browns failures, awesome. and the invitation of the women. So the usual. <laughs> no change. <laughs> All right, well, that'll wrap it up for the uh, inaugural episode here of the uh, fifth quarter sportscast. Uh, uh, tune in next episode, and we'll break down week three and see what we get into then. Uh, do all that good stuff, download, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next episode.